I want to tell you guys about the topic that we have today. It's called That, that Girl Who's On Fire. So we're going to talk about things that inspire you, what causes you to be on fire, if your fire has been put out. So we want to pray in, okay? Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Thank you for all the ladies that have joined in. Thank you for all the people that were here to help us to make this thing go off, Lord. I pray that everything that they need, that you give them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So each session, we like to, each session, <laughs> we like to, um, I'm just going to say I'm a little nervous. This is my first time. Hey, y'all. It's okay. <laughs> this is my girl, Tammy. Uh, all the cameras. It's all right. She normally behind the scenes. Uh, my crew, they out on vacation, enjoying their birthdays or whatever is going on. One of our kiddos out of town. Tammy, it's all right, girl. You got it. Okay. So we're going to go with the mission and vision. So um, our mission is to prove a sisterhood community, to provide a sisterhood community with an open space to express your whole single self. The vision to spiritually invest in a nurturing God-centered lifestyle experience. The purpose to raise awareness to single women and to promote self-empowerment, to live their authentic self and best self through the truth and thought of concentrated effort and practicing spiritual principles. So you guys are in for a great treat today. We have a couple special guests and I'm gonna kick it over to you. Okay, so we have two special people that I love so much and I'm so excited because these girls are on fire. And we're gonna first, uh, already caught up with Natasha Thomas. So we're going to play that video because she couldn't make it today. So we did a pre-recording, but you guys are going to enjoy this. So uh, Tiana, let's roll the tape. Oh my God, I'm so excited. This girl is on fire is this session, right? And I got two of my favorite people in the whole wide world that's gonna be on this show today. I'm sorry, on this session today. So I'm gonna introduce you all to someone who was first just a co-laborer at my church. We met at my church. We met through a, a, a friend of mine, Pat Richmond. Shout out to Pat Richmond. I was just with her the other night and she introduced me to this young lady saying she's looking for a roommate. I'm like, what? I was moving with you, Pat. Like, no, this, this, come on, Gail, I'm gonna introduce you to this girl. And she introduced me to this person. And first of all, when I tell y'all her name, ain't nobody I've met got a name like this. Sisters, please welcome my special panelist today. This girl is on fire, Miss Natasha Thomas. Hello, hello everyone. So we went to church together 17 years. That's amazing how 17 years flew by like that. Absolutely. We did our first lesson together studying that is, and it was how to study the Bible taught by our own pastor, Jill Cloud. That was intense. It was, that class was, it felt like I was in school school. Yes. Because we had homework. Yes. And they was checking that homework. Yes. We were scared. <laughs> <laughs> we said, study this word and get to know it and answer those questions. Right. And, you know, sisters, this is why I want to share Tasha's story. And you're going to hear about Sharon Richmond's story. And these single ladies, they are on fire. They're doing their thing. And we're going to talk about it. And you're going to hear about it. Because what's our goal? As we continue to show you who we are and the platform by this platform is letting you know that you can get to your authentic self, mm -hmm. your best self. Absolutely. And you don't have to whatever your situation is, whether you had a boyfriend or um, engaged and all that's off or you, you was married. Now you're divorced and you go by single. All of that. It doesn't matter if your purpose and God's will for your life is being ignored. So we wanted to bring this type of communication, this type of talk this type of conversation to our sisters so we can let you know hey we're not just on fire for what we're doing and what we believe we're doing in our own personal life but we're on fire for god absolutely and we practice his principles from the word of god what you say about that t so i think that's important because um i think the world that we're in you can get caught up in accomplishments and it's really no accomplishment is worth anything if it's not according to God's will. So being on fire 
really means that all that you do is to bring God glory. You know, it's easy to pump ourselves up and do things for ourselves, but it's worth nothing if God does not get the glory. So, right. And that's what I love. And thank you for that, T, because what is, yeah, I call her T, because I ain't saying no <laughs> Tasha, because when I wanted to say the word no by itself, she thought I was calling her name. Because her name Cause is people no call Tasha. Me no. Some people call me and no. And people call you no. Yeah. And our friend Van called you no, no. Yep. Come on now, man. Stop. <laughs> but that's so cool because they've been friends just as long as we have. So that's pretty cool. But I call her TT, Tasha Thomas. So I go with, I'm the shortcut queen. But um, T, what I love about your story is, which I'm going to go into now, she was engaged not only once, not once. but twice. Two times. That means third time Got is to. going to be a charm. Has to be. Got to be. I ain't gonna cross. <laughs> well, all I'm saying is twice. Yep. So if we saying she was twice engaged, never married. Never married. Tasha, I'm just. How was that? I mean, how did I? Can you share a little bit of how you maintain during these two separate engagements, years apart, and not faint? So my first engagement was right out of college. I was dating this guy. Um, I actually was, came to the sew factory right out of college. And I was dating this guy and one day he asked me to marry him. So I said, yes. It was um, that easy? Mm -hmm. So he just walked up to you and say, marry me? No, we had been dating. Okay. Yeah, Let's we had been dating for a couple years. And so we got engaged. My family was not um, a fan of oh. the engagement. Okay. My friends were not fans of okay. the engagement. Okay. So I was walking that whole road by myself, right? Trying to plan this wedding, buying a dress, planning stuff. But I'm a dreamer. And so I started having these dreams. Mm -hmm. And in my dreams, it would be my wedding day, right? And in the dream, every time it was a recurring dream, every time I had the dream, one day I couldn't find my dress, right? Okay. Next time I had the dream, I have no shoes to wear. Couldn't okay. find my shoes. Next time I had the dream, I think my hair wasn't done. And so I prayed. I was like, God, what does this mean? And he was like, you're not ready, right? Mm. So I eventually called the engagement off, you know, went on. Right after up. that dream you called the engagement off? Well, I had been off? having the dream for some months, right? And so I knew that I was not supposed to get married. But once you engage and you got a dress, you like, you want to keep it going. Right, you're going to keep this what thing going. What was the defining moment that says, I'm going to call him and I'm going to, like cut it off, stop. I couldn't get no rest. Like you couldn't sleep? I could not sleep you for months. You was talk oh wow. For months, this went on for some months, right? Trying to plan, I couldn't get things together. And so it really was, I really felt God was saying, don't do this, right? And I didn't, and I'm glad I didn't. But um, when he said it, you didn't, you didn't listen the first time he said it. No. You hear that sisters? No. That's how it goes. You don't always, okay, we hear God's voice, well, we hear a voice, we unsure, we get that, right? Mm -hmm. We get that, we're unsure. So it's okay if your journey takes, don't judge yourself and say, well, I should have done this faster or sooner. No, no, no. We, you only could get it when you get it. And that's when you get it. Okay, sisters? Yeah. So that was my first engagement early on. And then in my late 30s, I reconnected with a high school boyfriend, the one I was supposed to go to the prom with him when we were in high school. We reconnected. We hadn't seen each other, talked to each other in 20 years. And so we started off as friends and then eventually it moved, things moved fast. But we started off as friends and then the families got together and everybody was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be perfect. Right. So some months later, we got engaged. This was um, the second one. And this was the second one. And this one I thought was really going to work out. How many right? years apart was that from the first one to the second one? Probably 18 years. Yeah, because this was six years ago, maybe about 17, 18 years between the two. So I had been living my, you know, my single life. I had dated people. I had a few people that I dated that I thought was pretty serious. But of course, you know, relationships work and some don't. But this guy, it seemed like things were going to work out. There were some red flags that I was not paying attention to, clearly. But I really did think that things were going to work out. Mm -hmm. and. They did not, long story short, mm -hmm. they did not. And I knew that, I, again, the Lord was speaking and I was not 
initially making any decisions. Um, so I carried it all the way out. We had engagement party. I was there. <laughs> we had <laughs> engagement photos. We had, I had a dress. We had put money down on everything. I was almost done. We were in here having invitation parties and all of that. But I think in my gut, in my core, I knew that if I did move forward with this marriage, that it, it would not be the best decision for me, essentially. What was in, happening on the inside of you? Like, it was some trouble? So what were you No, feeling? I was seeing all the red flags. They were like clear red flags on, in this instance. The one before, you know, it was just a feeling. But this, I was seeing evidence and I was moving past all that I saw because I was about to be 40. And when you turn 40, something happens, right? Approaching 40, not married, want to have kids, haven't had kids. The doctor's telling you eggs is drying up. You know, you have some pressures that can cause you to make decisions that you might not make otherwise, right? And so I started feeling like my time was running out. And you know, it had been 18 years since my last engagement. I ain't gonna wait another one if I turn <laughs> this one down. So, you know, I started feeling like my time was running out. And I, I also felt like, you know, some people say, don't be so picky. So, okay, I ain't gonna be so picky. I'm gonna go with what I have. And three months before the wedding date, I called it off, so. I lost all my money and I still got dress in the closet that I keep trying to sell, but. Dress in the closet. I have no regrets whatsoever in mm. making that decision. Not at all. Like I told y'all when we started SOS, hey, we, we, want, we want what Tasha wanted. We want to be engaged. Me and Tasha went to a premarital class. Girl, I'd have been to a couple of them. At least, well, the first one we went, we were single, singles. You went another one. At least you were engaged or, or, or boyfriend, girlfriend situation, right? Yep. And um, so we went, but they had opened it up to singles this particular time. And we learned so much about ourselves mm -hmm. yeah. of what we thought we would, we thought we were ready. <laughs> and I found out that I didn't know that I, I had a, a skew uh, vision or uh, thought of, well, what it would be like to be with someone because I wanted to be married. And then I found out when I took that class, I didn't have the thought or the capacity to have someone in my space. Like I thought, I thought my space was going to be my space and he was just my husband. Like nothing was going to change around me. My atmosphere, my environment, the furniture I bought, <laughs> all that. What? He got to use the bathroom? My bathroom? I had the wrong mindset about it all. So I thank God for that class because it taught me mm -hmm. how I was thinking and what I thought I said I wanted. I wasn't ready for what I was saying out my mouth. Right. And this is why I love this particular platform because it just lets you talk all that out. What we say, hey, we're providing a space, an open space for you to bring your whole single self. And this girl is on fire bringing her whole <laughs> single self. And I just appreciate your story and sharing with us. Thank you for that vulnerability because I know because I was with Tasha some of these times how rough it was. Oh my gosh, yeah. So you're hearing that the post conversation to what she went through, but what she went through, this, the journey was very hard. Absolutely. And calling on God, I mean, that's the thing that we seem like the only thing we could run to for refuge, mm -hmm. for just to get through it, mm -hmm. to make it, I think yours was only like, some of us was day by day. You went through some moments, it was moment by moment. Right. Just trying to hang on second by second. What was that like for you? Uh, it was rough. I remember, you know, I had some times where I would be on the floor crying, right? Because I didn't know what to do. And I'm like, God, I feel like I'm doing things right. But clearly, even if I, even if in my eyes I was doing things right, if it's not God's will, it ain't, it ain't God's will, right? So right. I, can, I can want to walk in perfection all I want to, but if it's not God's will, it's not God's will. And that's what I had to come to grips with. Right. And like that his plan, the word says his plan is much greater than our plan. Right. And I had a plan. Right. <laughs> I had a plan. <laughs> right. And clearly. I was executing it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> She's a planner. Yeah, absolutely. I was executing the plan and things were, you know, seemingly going to work out the way I wanted them to work out. But it wasn't God's plan. Right. He has clearly had much more in store for me. And I don't mean that to say like marriage and a husband or mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. that since that last engagement, my life has just, it has, it has transformed. What is some, name of the core value of yours? Just one. <laughs> Honesty. <laughs> For sure. 
Honesty is one of my core values. Um, trust, loyalty. Like I'm a, I'm a loyal person. I'm a stick in there. That's my number one. <laughs> I'm a stick in there. Love is a core value for me. I mean, um, really? Yeah. And so those are things that, like you said, you don't want to compromise. Right. And when I found myself in relationships, recognizing that the person I wanted to marry didn't have those same core values, it was, it was eye-opening. So I want to share just one thing so we can get past this and why, I mean, why, why what? I want to, I want to kill all that right now. Let's get this thing. Let's get this dress. Sisters, here's what we're going to tell you. It is never too late <laughs> to start doing what you ought to be doing for your pur for God's purpose in your life. Look here. She, this ain't the first one. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> she bought a second one. <laughs> we were all the way there. I sold the first one so I could buy the second one. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> It's never too late. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. None of that. It's still that trying to show sell this passion. thing, though. It's trying to sell it. It's a gorgeous dress. But I, like I was telling you earlier, I think every woman has a dream of what trying on dresses, all of that would be like. And I think one of the you said, you know, you asked me what was the moment I knew is we have been dress shopping, dress shopping, dress shopping. And, you know, I tried this dress on. And it was gorgeous. My mama was crying. My sister was crying. Everybody was crying. And in my heart of hearts, I couldn't even muster a tear because I didn't have the joy that I had always imagined I would have. Right. Wow. Because my situation was already it was already jacked up. Right. And so turn it around. Uh huh. Um, it was already jacked up. And I knew in my heart of hearts, as pretty as this dress is, it's going to belong to somebody else some, one day. As soon as I can sell it. Y'all, sisters, y'all hear her? She is not talking from a place of being a bitter person. <laughs> Girl, no. She said, I it's had to gorgeous. do what I had to do. So if anybody get I had married, to do what I had. Look at this. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous dress. This can't be your reason why you hold on to That's something true. that you shouldn't be. That's true. Just don't let it be your reason. Very Never true. Never let things interrupt your spirit mm -hmm. to the point of that you would hold on to this rather than to hold on to what's inside you. Right. And the only reason I have it is because I've been trying to sell it. And clearly, I'm having a hard time. So, and because it's in the closet, mm -hmm. it's often, it's out of sight, out of mind, until somebody reminds me that I have a wedding dress in the spare closet. But yeah. So if anyone knows <laughs> somebody wants to buy a wedding dress, <laughs> please give me a call. But yes, you know, I had to, I had to let go of the because marriage is not about the dress right it's not even about the wedding it really is about what happens after that and so letting go of this right because this is what i was trying to get to I was trying to get to wedding and dress and bridesmaids and flowers and cake and all that great stuff but recognizing that the next day i was gonna have to be married to somebody that wasn't god's choice for me and that was going to be when the reality set in so these dresses you can buy I won't say a dime a dozen because it don't this don't cost a dime <laughs> <laughs> we don't, you, know, you just said something made me think we're gonna probably start a SOS reality show we talk about the real after the real mm -hmm. the but, R E E L after the R E A L yeah. okay that's good, that's good. <laughs> but yeah just you know this so, thing can sit in the closet and have no you know have no emotion tied to a dress and since Tasha's life has transformed I want to share some of the things with you all that speaks to why this girl is on fire. Tasha, get this thing right here. <laughs> you want me to get it? Yeah, girl. We're going to show y'all something. Can you tell our sisters what is this and why do you have it? So one of the things that is important to me is um, STEM education. And so for years, I've been, you know, volunteering with several organizations. I even went off and thought that I was supposed to be a, a teacher. And them kids um, sent me back to my regular job <laughs> and ran me off. But I think oh, uh, out of that, um, it just it sparked a desire in me to be able to encourage our youth. Right. There are not a lot of brown and black children in STEM related fields. Um, I'm in a STEM related field. And oftentimes I walk into the room and I'm the only person of color. And so for years I've been working with several organizations just to encourage our youth in STEM. 
And last year, my company, um, this was their first year being involved with the Black Engineer of the Year Award organization, which is called BEA. Okay. And my team at work actually nominated me. So, um, <laughs> thank you. They nominated me for the award. My award got raised up to the corporate level, which means that they reviewed my award package at the corporate level, and the company decided that a group of us would be submitted as um, potentials. And I did not win the Black, Year of the Black Engineer of the Year Award, but I did win what they call a legacy award. And so they review your package and they say, okay, this person's values, accomplishments align with a particular person that has won an award before. And I won the Dr. Eugene M. Deloach Award. He's actually, he was the one who started the engineering department at Morgan State University. And um, he's been very instrumental in STEM education and encouraging our black youth to enter into STEM fields. So earlier this year, there was a whole award ceremony at the conference. I had to give a little speech and do it. all of that. <laughs> but it was just a great honor. And I am not the person who seeks to be recognized publicly, right? I like to be in the background. So this was a big deal for me, right? And it was even bigger than I had imagined, right? They were like, oh, you got to do a speech. You got a speech right at teleprompter and all of that. And just the recognition, not just from the organization, but from my team at work, right? Because they are the one who started saying, I didn't know they had been paying attention. And the, when they put my nomination package together, they had documented all the stuff I had been doing in my spare time, not at work. Wow. And that it was so impressive that they had paid attention to all the things that I would just mention. Hey, yeah, I'm going to tutor this or yeah, I'm going to volunteer. They had all of that in the package. I didn't know they were paying attention. Sister, <laughs> I did not know. Let me tell you, when you're doing what your purpose to do, the whole world will eventually know because this is God's world. This is God's way. This this is all always been yeah. in you. This is what if she had focused on other things than the things that was really in her heart to focus on. Yeah. STEM, can I hold your award? Sure. Because I'm never not going to get one of these. Because <laughs> what, what's STEM for? What's... Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Uh, what's that new movie called? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't one of these because I'm, I'm, I'm mathematically challenged, right? We talked about that. <laughs> See, she, she tried to help me. Um, this is beautiful, Tasha. Congratulations. Thank you. I've lived with you long enough and seen you go do stuff for your children, seen you put together programs and all kinds of curriculums for kids. And even when you were a teacher for a little bit, thank you for blessing our children. Thank you for blessing, um, having a mind to bless those. To The most important thing to me out of this, the legacy award. Mm -hmm. So you're leaving a legacy. So mm -hmm. this is the right award for you. Right. And thank you. And sisters, I'm telling you, Natasha Thomas, this girl is on fire. Oh, was that so good? Okay. That's right. Oh my God. Tasha Thomas. I call her TT, as y'all. Mm -hmm. I was so enjoying that. And I'm watching it as if I wasn't there uh, doing that. Yeah, I needed, I was like, oh, I want some more information. I had questions. I was like, what was it like, the process of uh, letting go? Like, really calling and saying, this. How did you get past that? Like, how did you get through that part of calling it off, being so close to your wedding day? And I think she mentioned a little bit of that, but I think, Tasha, when you go back and listen to this, call us or send us some of those answers to uh, SOS at the soulfactory.com so we can know, because I'm sure they got other questions from other sisters that want to know some things, because as I shared, I said, Tasha, that had to be hard. And she shared a little bit how there were times she was just on the floor crying. Yeah. I mean, this is real life real situations we go through as single women, especially those who got so close to getting engaged, yeah. where you buy a ring, uh, the person bought a ring and dress, dress everything. Yeah. invitations. We had the engagement party. Yeah. And as she said, she started invitation. She didn't get none of her money back. None of it. <laughs> that probably hurt a little bit too. And this girl had to gain her composure through it. But like she said, those godly principles calling on God, calling on what's inside of you, right? Not the outside. Nothing about the outside matters when it comes to the, the, the matter of heart. Okay, that's, that's where God goes in. That's, that's where he takes care of the healing. Okay, our mind and our heart have to be healed of those things. Right? Yep. 
And so thank Tasha Thomas and thank uh, for her taking time out to talk with the SOS team and share with us her journey and also the award that she received. Mm -hmm. This is why that girl is on fire. And um, we have another guest coming up soon. I can't wait. But I'm gonna share a little bit about um, what makes me and what sets my soul on fire. Tammy, we could talk about that a little bit. And I think, um, you know, I have a regular job, right? But I think what sets me on fire is when I do the work of the volunteerism, mm -hmm. the volunteer for the nonprofit that I'm connected with, the Soul Factory, yeah. Soldiers Outreach Ministry, Kids Eat Free. Um, actually, they're doing a pop up today between nine and two. Go down to Waldorf, those in the DMV area. They're down there in front of Sam's. You could go there, buy some stuff, give to the children. They're going to pack it up. And we have a backpack program where we have people deliver food to our children, those that are um, food insecure. Yeah. So you could do that. You could join, you know. Yeah. So if you're down there in that area, in the Clinton, um, what area else is down that way? Clinton, when you're on your way down Route 5 and all that. Yeah, all that stuff down there. Yeah, yeah. please, come and help us out. Yeah, so do that today. So just anybody listening, all my single sisters, right. help, help us out. So, yeah, so we're doing those kind of things. So that ignites me. That sets my soul on fire when I can do those kinds of things, when I can um, give, lend my time and not just money, but my time and my talent. You know, we have meetings. I like to be a part of that. I like to share my ideas and what can help us and what can make us grow and what can make. This is me going and reaching my better self. You know, we talk about being our best self, authentic self. This is who I am. This is what sets me on fire. What set you on fire? Um, it's the helping other, helping people, other people, um, helping people get it. You know what I mean? Getting to know who God is. Um, I'm a background person, so and I'm also visual. So I like to bring all the visual aspects to people. I don't. Um, if there is any type of event that we're doing in our church, I like to be the person to try and help. I don't have to uh, lead it or anything like that. I just want to make sure that it gets done. That they, they get the food, that the production goes smooth, that you get the image. The biggest thing for me and what sets my soul on fire is being able to help others set their own soul on fire and be authentically who they are. That's what brings me joy. Amen. Thank you for being on fire today and helping a sister out because right. the SOS crew is out. Right. So I appreciate that. So, you know, you've been reeled in now. Yeah. This is it. <laughs> Y'all, so now I'm going to introduce... Oh, OK, I'm going to have to take a breather because this person is so special, not for um, just because. Um, well, I'm going to say it this way. How long I've been at the church? Twenty five years. Mm -hmm. And I've been knowing this young lady 30 plus years. Oh, wow. I know. When we started thinking about the timeline, we was like, wait. So I met this person when I was got a part time job at Susie Casuals. Anybody in the DMV knows Susie Casuals from Landover Mall? Y'all remember Landover Mall had the movie theater where you walk downstairs? Okay, I'm probably telling my age at this point. But anyways, y'all know, okay, from the Landover crew, from Village in the Woods, all that hood. <laughs> you know about that? Next to Glenn Harden. So, and when I met this person, I thought of her. She don't know this, so now she's going to find out. I used to look up to her. And we, I didn't know we were going to become friends. When you meet somebody at work, you don't know how you just work friends or work just go co-workers. But this young lady, uh, we became friends. And I, like I said, it's been 30 plus years. Um, the only reason I look this way today, <laughs> this good today, is because Miss Sharon Richmond of Rich Face Makeup would not let me come on camera unless she put her touch on me. So, da-da! <laughs> Ladies, sisters, welcome my good friend of 30 plus years, Miss Sharon Richmond. Come on, sit by me, girl. <laughs> yeah, we can clap. Good Do we have, good morning. Do we have her on camera? She's gonna, they're gonna widen it for us. There we go. Sisters, Miss Sharon Richmond of uh, Rich Face Makeup Boom. So you see all this. I was like, this is me? <laughs> is this Gail Cox? So thank you 
welcome. For, Thanks for having me. Uh, adding this to and making me so beautiful today. You're welcome. I love you. <laughs> so, sisters, this girl is on fire. And we're going to talk about that a little more. And we're going to um, just dive into what sets her soul on fire, what makes her tick, what her godly principles that she go by, how she make this journey, how long she been in this journey. Um, when I met her, she was not yet Rich Face Makeup Inc. Who were you? Sharon Richmond. <laughs> Sharon Richmond, the glamour girl. I always, you know, look for hair, makeup, just being in the industry. My mom was a hairstylist. Oh, wow. I never wanted to do hair, though. Never wanted to do hair. Um, I'm a Dudley graduate. Oh, wow. Uh, DC, Dudley's Beauty College. I remember, Washington, yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm a licensed esthetician, mm -hmm. um, a skincare specialist. And from there, um, of course, I picked up the hair skills mm -hmm. at Dudley's as well. Um, and I went from now I do hair, makeup for television, theater, and film. And wow. I also do styling. That's where Susie Casual is coming. That's once where Susie. Get it once you once you get it, you never lose it. So right. I've just added on to my profession throughout the industry, and it all works. Everything works according to his will. Hey, man, y'all hear that? When we just did, and I think, what was the name of your first vision, your first company? You know what? My first business card just had makeup artists on it. It was a black and white card, and it just said makeup artist. <laughs> and it really worked for me. Um, I was a... I did start out as a Mary Kay consultant. Mm -hmm. Now, I remember being a Mary Kay consultant. I'm like, okay, how am I going to let everybody know this is what I do. So I really just recorded a message on my voicemail saying, hi, this is Sunshiny Sharon. I remember that back, <laughs> that's back in the day. day. Girl, that's back in the Oh back. my God. Um, but it worked because everybody then knew this is, anytime they called or reached out to me, they knew this is what I do. Wow. Mm -hmm. I remember that. This is back in the day. Remember you would travel? You were always business, like anyways. And you would travel from D.C. I think you were living in Columbia at the time. And I lived in Adelphi. Right. That's right. Yes. She was like, call me, girl. Can I stay over? I can't go. I can't make it all the way home. Yeah, and I've always right. been that hospitali you know, hospitable type of person. Oh, you Even then. Welcome, I'm just now welcome, thinking about that. Yeah. I was like, come on through. I only got one bed. You can sleep on the floor. We had that thick carpet. Thank God for thick carpet. So I we love that condo, <laughs> that condo though. Oh my God, it was the best. The view. Yes, it was like your second home. And it was very early on. You were doing it early. You well, were doing it early. I mean, you praise about to God. Setting standards. Mm -hmm. You know, you was in the bins of family. <laughs> Very early on. Way back then. <laughs> Look at God. Won't he do it? I'm telling you. My pastor bought me the shirt. Pastor Jill's like, she had to get this. She saw it somewhere. She was like, oh, I got to get this for uh, my friend. And it's like, won't he do it? I've been saying that for a long he does time. It for me. Right? Yes, he does it for me. And so this is what I love about your story and what makes you on fire because I didn't know that you would, your journey would be here. I didn't know this at all. Who knows? This is why it's so good, sisters, to remain faithful to what you believe God called you to be. Your desires. Right. Right, do Sharon? Do what you really want to do. Ask yourself, you know, what would make me happy? And one thing um, when I got started, a photographer told me, and um, I never forgot it. He said, do what you love to do. And the money's going to come. And he never lied. He never lied. Wow. So I enjoy um, meeting women and and doing their makeup and just making them feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. themselves. And just when I finish the makeup and, and hand them the mirror, how they just perk up mm -hmm. and sit different and walk out the door different. And it just builds their spirit so much that that's just what you know, inspires me more to, to, that I see them in a way that they hadn't seen themselves. Wow. You know, that's so important. I love that because everyone that plays their part doing kingdom business mm -hmm. and you speak to their spirit, to what 
the inside of them and that sometimes on the outside doesn't betray all the time what a person feels on the inside. Correct. And sometimes you like you can make like you had them to perk up. And what beats happy? They're Nothing. looking good and feeling good. You know, That's happy and this to me. Is, right. And this is great. <laughs> this is what I love because you're doing your part. I'm doing my part. Tammy's doing her part. We're all doing our part in building the kingdom. And the kingdom is about building our sisterhood souls that sets our souls on fire. Just feeling good about yourself. Yes. With just nothing that. else. Just good within yourself. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Amen. This is what I love. So Sharon, what else makes you on fire? What sets your soul on fire? What makes you tick? What, what principles, what is your go-to, um, which is a separate question besides what sets your soul on fire, but what, what happens if there's ever disappointment and you encounter that along your journey? What's your go-to? Well, I like good energy. Um, because as a makeup artist, I work so closely. I am in your space. I am touching you. So if you're feeling sad or uncomfortable, or you're even thinking about something that made you feel sad, that energy overwhelms me sometimes. And I just have to be strong enough and in my, in my own spirit and combat that, you know, calling on the name of Jesus. There's power in his name. Amen. If I ever get Jesus. frightened, I know to call that name three times. <laughs> Even if I have a bad dream, girl, I'm in my dream as an adult. I'm in my dream calling Jesus three times. Okay. It works and it settles you. Just keeping the word of God, um, you know, in my mind and in my presence and, you know, being consistent with reading the word. I thought I can just hear it, um, especially after the pandemic. No. It gives me so much peace now. Um, I have the Bible app on my phone, which has really helped me. Um, Cause during the pandemic, I was really afraid. You know, I have mortgage to pay. And then as a freelance artist, I didn't work for a year. Wow. I didn't work the whole year. I'm like, okay, Lord, what are we gonna do now? And I literally had to relinquish that fear. Sisters, please. Please listen intently. Go ahead. And it, and it took a minute. I did do um, the global surrender fast, which was it was a 40 day global surrender fast that really helped me um, surrender the fear mm -hmm. and just trust God that everything was going to work out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, is this thing? Because I knew only my God could shut the whole world down. Okay. So I'm like, OK, you know, the pandemic didn't catch God by surprise. Mm -hmm. He knew that this was happening. So I just had to, you know, brace myself and really just pour into me. Mm -hmm. And and so I have the Bible app on my phone. Literally, I have it set at eight o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. and I have it set at eight o'clock at night. And just reading whatever I'm doing, mm -hmm. I can be in the middle of whatever I'm doing. Of course, if I'm not driving, something like that. <laughs> but I read the scriptures and it's quick, you know, and then it's inspiring and at eight o'clock at night. And then you push it once you say amen, when I agree to it, mm -hmm. then it records that you do it, that you've done, you did this consistently oh, really? all okay. week. Right. Mm -hmm. Trust me, that has helped me in just reading the word. Mm -hmm has given me so much peace. So when I do go out in the world and someone is having a bad day or and I'm working with something where their energy is off, mm -hmm. the shield is <laughs> the shield is up. Mm -hmm. And I've just that's just been my new experience and I like it. That's I like wonderful, it a lot. Sharon. Wow, thank you for sharing with us that. That's great. <laughs> Sisters, I'm telling you, we have these godly principles. Sharon knows uh, my journey a little from the I've been walking this particular walk for a while. I've been at the Soul Factory 25 years, That's Tammy. Awesome. Yeah, and Pastor Jill has invested in us women. She has done uh, conferences, seminars, webinars. She's done it all. So ladies, wherever you at in your life, it's okay. We may have 25 years or 30 years and we bring this to you. Wherever you are, it's okay to start right there. 
we practice these things. And you heard what Sharon just said and practicing and get, having the Bible app on your phone. All of these tools we're giving you to put in your toolkit to hold on to, to so that you can um, move toward your authentic self and find yourself who you are. And we do that by allowing God spirit inside of us and following that spirit and being guided by him. These are the principles we practice from the word of God. We've tried other ways. Trust me, we've done it all. You name it, we've done it. Now we're saying we're dedicating our lives to Christ this way because I did it. I tried to you know, do that boyfriend, girlfriend thing. That ain't worked for me. And I didn't even believe what I was doing anyways. I didn't want to have sex before marriage. I didn't, right? But now I tried it and it didn't work out for me and I got the same result. So guess what? I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it the way I really believe and I'll be my authentic self. I'm gonna be my real self. Sharon, I wanna ask you, cause I got mine today. Sisters, I hope you're holding on to your core values. I'm gonna ask Sharon um, some of hers and Tammy, what's a couple of your core values? Uh, honesty. Honesty is... Uh, that was Tasha's too. Yeah, a big thing for me. To be truthful and sincere and frank. I try really hard to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Integrity. I try to practice integrity in everything that I do. Um, um, honesty. Those and are yours. The outer world reflect my inner world. To be what it seems to be. Um, loyalty and self-awareness, look order. They all go together, right? Oh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Look that way. So I'm going to share a couple of mines and I'm going to ask Sharon what's a couple of, I know y'all want to know what's hers because she got it going on. Fabulous, Miss Fabulous. That's her new nickname. I'm going to name her. But Compassion is one of mine. I'm working on that one. <laughs> See, that's good. This is real. So many these things we have to absolutely work on. And I ain't never finished. Yeah. yeah. Right? We ain't never finished. We working on it too. These are the things that I, those are my go-to. So friendship, that's very important to me. Generosity. Sharon, you're very generous. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Generosity. But I'm going to let her tell y'all, these are some uh, loyalty. Just like Tammy, a few of us, loyalty. We, we've been with the Soul Factor as long as we've been because I think our core value is loyalty. Yeah. Deron and Jill blessed us so much um, sharing that uh, I, I call Jill my soulmate. And um, because she's so connected with me and God allowed me to walk with her and learn <laughs> the stuff that I've learned mm -hmm. so I can be this person, this young lady who I am today. And she poured so much in. I know God bless you, Jill, for all the hard times I gave you. <laughs> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> I appreciate you. Love you. <laughs> so Sharon, you know, what are some of your core values and what church do you attend? Um, I attend Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. That is um, 215 Rhode Island Avenue. Pastor Terry D. Streeter. We are 103 years old. And we've only had three pastors in the whole history of the church. I love my church. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Without a doubt. It's the only church I've grew up in. The okay. only one that I know. So, and just getting the word is he brings the word. My pastor is pastor of all pastors. Okay. Right. It, when you think about Harvard and Yale, getting the word from my pastor, it's like going to Harvard or Yale. He's bringing the truth. He's bringing values. And he breaks it down and relate it to just everyday life. So, you know, that's wonderful. This is what Tammy and I know this, too, because we, um, Pastor Jill, I, I grew up in the church, for those who might not know my story, and I was actually attending uh, the church I grew up in was my dad's church. Yes. So to <laughs> leave my dad's church was a huge undertaking, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it takes that to just to find your own place, and and your own I, identity. Absolutely. And I absolutely found that, believe it or not, at the Soul Factory, and so much so that I'm there 25 years later. Let me tell you a story about going to church. I didn't go to church with my family, my parents, my mom and dad, but my neighbor wow. took me to church um, with her every Sunday. And, you know, I just always wanted to get out and go as a kid, right? So she would take me shopping on a shopping spree to get church clothes. Wow. And I would, and I get to pick whatever I want. 
because we go into church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So we would get up in the morning and catch the bus to go to church, right? And she loved these candy corn candies, right? So initially, I was just excited about going to church and getting new clothes. So as a kid, <laughs> right? And then getting away, getting out the house from my family's house and, you know, we're going somewhere. I always wanted to go somewhere on the go. And we would get to church and I knew she had these candy corns, right? And I would be looking cute in my new clothes and I'm excited about going. And I knew she had the candy, so I would be pulling on her. Can I have candy corn? Because I knew she had it. That was her favorite candy. Can I have the candy corn? And she said, no, not yet. Not yet, right? So I would sit there and it, it taught me to be still and listen. Okay. Right? Um, but then when the sermon started, she would give me the candy corn and I would sit there and listen and I would eat the candy corn. She never gave it to me before the sermon started. And so after the sermon was over, I was on such a rush and a high <laughs> from the sugar. Now I'm excited and, you know, ready to get back on the bus and all that. And she managed that energy as a child. Mm -hmm. So I never could, uh, we didn't have the uh, iPhones and the tablets in church now. I had to sit there and listen. Mm -hmm. Right. But I knew she had those candy corns, but she managed my energy to make me be still long enough to get through the sermon. And then I got the candy, you know, and I had all the energy where I was ready to give energy. Right. This so is like, why brilliant. It takes a village. Absolutely. So your neighbor, my neighbor, bless him. Mm -hmm. This God why it takes a village, soul. sisters. Everyone pours into our life. God sends people mm -hmm. into our life during certain seasons for special reasons to do what he needs to get done through us and in us for a time such as this. And I'm at that very same church that she took me to. Wow. wow. <laughs> That's Mount Pleasant so Baptist beautiful. Church, D.C. That's beautiful. Yeah. And that. So what, what's, what makes you tick? What's, your, what's some of your core values? Well, what makes me... Oh, well, I like all the things that you mentioned, loyalty, honesty, trust, um, being a woman of my word is very important. That's that's integrity, um, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if I'm, you know, if I book a client and someone else calls paying more money, I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm already booked. Oh, MG. Yeah. So I never, hear that? Mm -hmm, I, I stay committed to what I've... Um, what came first and that and you know a couple of times I've tried to change and it never worked out in the beginning it never worked out it's like okay I'm not gonna do that again <laughs> <laughs> that's so, so beautiful but that has given me the longevity mm -hmm. in the business um just being committed to my client showing up on time um just making a way so they can depend on me this is so beautiful. That's why I love your story. That's why I love Tasha's story and your journey. I've been blessed to watch Natasha's journey, and I've been blessed to watch your journey. From the beginning yes. to now, she was doing Mary Kay way back in the day. And they it started with retail. Right, and I think I was in my 20s. Yeah. We won't talk numbers. You don't have to talk your numbers. Was... I'm like, she don't say she, you know, she in the industry a certain kind of way. Yeah, I'm all good. Um, so from retail, it started from retail to skincare to hair, then um, then the makeup. And I do makeup for television, theater, and film, mm -hmm. as well as special effects. Wow, because I saw you make somebody look like a monster. Mm -hmm. And one of those movies, I don't know which one, but yeah, I saw a picture of that. So just this month, I went from um, working in the news every morning. Can we mention? doing um, the opera at the Kennedy Center. Can right? we mention? Personal clients. I can't mention the personal name. Oh, we can mention the personal name. Can Everybody you say her name? Know. Say her name. She did the makeup of... Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. Boom! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so all the photos that you see, um, the hearings, all the personal appearances that she's made. The magazine in Vogue. The magazine in Vogue at the Lincoln Theater. Yes, I have done the makeup for those photos and, and her. And guess what Sharon mentioned to us? Money? Mm -mm. She stayed committed to her craft 
committed to her authentic self, committed to her best self, committed to the gift God has given her to work this way, to meet people, and to also help change if they're having a bad day, a sad day, all of that. Sisters, the harvest is plentiful. It is the laborers that's few. That's this true. is why we got to do what God called us to do. Serve in the capacity that God puts you in and wherever he takes you. You are who you are, no matter where you are. No matter what job you take, no matter what industry you're in, God can use you. This is what we're talking about. Let's focus on that. We understand about those who are engaged and have boyfriend, girlfriend situation, one husband, all of that great stuff, right? But what's important to us? If we live our best self now, while the spirit of God is in us and while he's using us to do his will and his purpose. Hey, if you got some questions, you want to throw it in a chat line, do that. Or um, we're going to bring some live. We could do that, too. Tammy, I know she was writing down points and stuff and, yeah. and making notes because she's like, OK, what's going on? And this is, you know, I, I so appreciate our sisters, too, that we have a lot of sisters behind the scenes mm -hmm. that's working our cameras, working our tech. They doing great work. They doing what God has called them to do. These women, these sisters are loyal. They've been here for a while. We got Marlena, Tiana, Joanne, Jordan. Uh, we got we got a brother here today with us, Nico. He all he he in the background. He all good. He good. You know they get their props. I'm giving our sisters our props today um, for what God is doing through our lives. Yes. And how God is using us and how God is keeping us, which is amazing. And as uh, Sharon say, the God has given her the longevity in this industry. And, and everyone in that industry knows how it is, how you could be short lived. And when you commit it and you have integrity, you know, that's already a disaster in the world. Integrity? The world don't care about that. But when you care about it and when you allow God to use you, when you allow God to guide you to your best self and your authentic self, it's OK. We're not perfect. This is what I love about the Soul Factory. We're loving the perfectly imperfect person. Absolutely. And that's who we are. This is what we bring to you all. This is where we say, you can do this. This is why I bring these sisters in front of you. This is why we share our stories. We share our journey with you. And we're hoping that you're going along with us. We're hoping that you, too, can find your authentic self and be that. This is what Pastor Jill says often. Let's be being. This is why her website, Be Free 365. Absolutely. <laughs> Dot com. So you can be that free every day. Yes. And be who you really are. And it's, we're not telling you to be perfect. Absolutely. I don't know perfection because I've never seen it. Right. But what I do know is a loving, kind, beautiful, smart, individual women that allow God to use them. Their spirit field. You could be that, too. So send any questions. We got any questions coming in the chat line? Marlena, <laughs> Joanne, where we at? Let's do this Nobody's thing. perfect. We just, you know, we're just here to serve. We're here to serve. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're we are. We're here to serve. And this is what and then I like about our stories, um, Sharon and, and Tammy, because mm -hmm. Tammy with integrity and I mean, she has to have it because she works in an industry that's rough. Yeah. I'm in customer service. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to you gotta hold those tongues, girl. <laughs> you gotta hold them. You gotta be honest and still loving at the same time. You gotta tell people no, or the yes, we can do this, and still be loving, still hold to it. Because people tell you all kinds of things. They call you all kinds of things because you can't. They can't get what they want. And so the integrity is. I still got to hold to the the company that I work for a policy that people don't want you to. You know, and I used to tell um, some of our volunteer leaders when we would do um, conferences for Pastor Jill. Mm -hmm. And I say, when we go, we're never not representing ourselves. We're Absolutely. always representing Pastor Jill and our church oh, and Christ. Yeah. So when so when you act unseemingly, mm -hmm. it doesn't end there. It The people look at you in a broad way, like they're looking at you only. They're looking at where you come from, who you're connected with, who you're associated with, mm -hmm. who you work with. This is why it's important for us when keep good company yeah. around us. Yeah. You we, attract who you are. That's so it. work on your better self. That's this it. is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sharon. This is why it's important. I went to Canada once. Oh, you you 
I, I trained in Toronto. Trained in Toronto. At Complexions International Makeup School. So that's where I polished all the television, theater, and film. And I did uh, the special effects there. That was the main reason of going. Wow. And I was mentioned in Canada because I went to Canada once, or a couple of times, but I went with a friend at the time, and we went in the store. And so she was trying on some shades and she she they, she asked the person how much and she's like, no, I don't want to buy them because whatever the cost was. So we go out. I bought my items. We go out. We're walking along and she puts on the shades. And I'm like, wait, you, you didn't buy them. You put them back. She was like, oh, no, I put them in my purse and she didn't buy them. I said, oh, we in another Ooh, country. Hey, you shoplifted. Right. <laughs> Y'all. I was afraid, afraid. Mm, and abomination. I, that day, I never went to the store with her again in all of these years. And that had to have been like 40 years ago. Wow. Never, ever. It is important on who your circle and who you surround yourself with. I sure don't want to be around no shoplifters and, you know, or thieves. And I don't got time to be going to jail. Well, you are a product of your environment. So you will be judged by the people that you walk with. Right, that's it. It and is important, important to keep a good circle. Yes. yes, so sisters, make sure you have your circle, your best circle of people that just not, you know, your cheerleader only, but they also say, hey, you did this, that wasn't cool. And pray for discernment. Hey, that's what we were just finishing on. And, and hey. our, our pastor, uh, Jill, been preaching on discernment she, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And that's what you we got to ask Jesus for discernment. You have to because, you know, people are going to come into your life. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, we're out in the world. We can't conform to the worldly ways. We have to stand on our values and our principle and what has been poured in us by, you know, good good Christian values. Absolutely. And this is what this is what we practice. And the reason why we use the word practice, because we ain't perfect and we ain't perfect. there yet. We are journeying just like you are. But we're sharing with you how you can do this. We're showing you how you can do this. Absolutely. It's possible. It is. Oh, without a doubt. When I met Sharon, there were people we met along the way, but there are certain people you stick with, the spirit stick with. It, yeah. There's certain people God absolutely called you to be in friendship with. The beauty about our friendship that we've met and there was that magnet there and we've encouraged each other and supported each other. And then we at times we've gone out and did fabulous things without each other. But somehow it just brought us all right back together again over the years. And that's what you call friendship, that I don't have to be with you every day. I don't have to speak with you every single day. But our energy matched so well mm -hmm. that we have the same standards and values Absolutely. Um, that it just came back full circle. And Absolutely. here we are. Now, now, when I met Gail, her voice has always been so soft and, and sensuous and um, calming and just inviting. And I was like, Gail, a long time ago, you don't need to be doing retail. You need to be doing radio. You have a radio <laughs> voice. Now, I've known her for a long time, and I've always said that, did I not? Yes. And here we are. So, in front of the camera, <laughs> God's plan is God's plan. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it takes that person outside of you to see good things in you and mention it. So, you know, like your parents, you know that your child is, can run fast. So get them in track and feel, you know, you, you know, you know that they like um, glamour. For instance, I had Barbie dolls lined up, Barbie dolls, baby <laughs> dolls all lined up. And, um, you know, just I've been pointed in the right direction. My mom was a hairstylist. So um, and here I am again. I have live Barbie dolls now. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. You know, you know my goddaughter, she's work. into, um, I have two goddaughters. My little goddaughter, uh, Zuri, she's into karate. And okay. I think she just got her white belt. Oh, nice. I think so. So you have to celebrate them where, you yes. know, where they are and, and, and put them, put the, put, 
make the path, show them the pathway, you know, yes. to be exposed to their desires. Yes. Because we all have gifts. Yes. And again, if you find out what your gift is, the money's going to come because right. we all have gifts. He will make way for your gift. I believe that. We Do we have some questions, Joanne? <laughs> or oh, Marlene, no questions? All right. So we're... Um, what I want to share, I think you had a couple of questions. Did you mention that, Tammy? I want to make sure I got you, make sure I got what your input is. And um, so sisters, make sure, surround yourself. You're going to like share and say all kinds of people are going to come into your space in your life. Somebody's coming on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Alicia. I'm, um, I'm sorry for the background noise. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if you all can hear me okay. But um, I, was, I just wanted to say thank you for having this meeting today. And I'm appreciative of all, everybody who has collaborated in some way, shape, or form. And just um, for the panelists being present. And um, for everybody just uh, being present and speaking because it was really touching and um, it did, it it helped me. Um, so I had resonated with each and every one of you ladies that has spoken and shared your story. So I just wanted to say thank you first and foremost. And um, for, you know, the Soul Factory continuously creating the platform. I've been a member for as long as I can remember. I'm 31 and I was introduced to the church by my mom. Um, and I kind of fell out since COVID happened. So I really haven't been as in touch with the church as I like to be, but I'm just glad that I am, you know, that God led me back to um, just getting closer to him and figuring out my own self as a single mother of three and just uh, also a, a fellow artist, a local artist. And um, just on my path of entrepreneurship and and um, eventually wanting to speak as well. There you go, Alicia. And girl, it's okay. And guess what? We're going to have a pop-up on December 4th. Meet us there. SOS crew going to be there. You're going to meet us there on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. It's okay. Whatever the journey falling off, you're back on. It's all good. It's all good. The pandemic has taught me that God is in with within us so it's not the, the building that we walk into but god is already within us we are the church that's what she's saying absolutely so there it goes so <laughs> if you can't make it on december 4th still look out in zoom still stay connected that way it's all good baby girl but if you can make it out do that too take care thank you for calling in we appreciate you thank you absolutely. for watching we have anybody else Thank you. I did have one more question. Do you all have like contact information so we can keep in touch? I'm Sharon Richmond on Facebook and IG is Rich Face Makeup. Yeah, because I don't normally look like this, Alicia. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all get it in because we about to close out soon. We trying to get down Waldorf. <laughs> Help kids eat free, right. get some food for our children. For our, because they, they're experiencing food insecurity. We got uh, coats we're collecting. Nice. Um, yeah, they dropped off coats for the homeless. I just heard they dropped off about 50 hot meals to the homeless oh. shelter. So, so fact, the kids eat free, soldiers outreach. God bless you. Yes. And the Lord is doing your thing. So, um, as y'all heard Sharon say, she's in the movie theater, television, she do all that kind of stuff. Blessing people through her gift, bringing the spirit of God and allowing them to experience that when they have sadness, disappointment, all things. Be who you are, where you are, allow God to use you.